for seeing that we have this ministry. All you got to do is As we have received mercy, is. we faint not, but have renounced the hidden things of dishonesty, Lord. not walking in practice, nor handling the word of deceitfully, but by manifestation of the truth, commending ourselves to every man's conscience in the sight of God. But if our gospel be hid, it is hid to them that are lost, in whom the God of this world has blinded the minds of them, which we believe not, lest the light of this glorious gospel of Christ, who is in the image of God, should shine unto them. For we preach not ourselves, but Christ Jesus the Lord.
His word tells me He will. He will complete it. Yes, He will. His name. He's a miracle worker. Jesus. He'll work in your life. He's confident. I'm confident. I'm confident. I know he'll work in you. He'll save your soul. He can make you whole. He's a miracle worker. Yes, I am. I am confident. I'm confident. Yes, I am. I'm confident. We are located on the corner of South Pine and Martin Luther King Jr. Way in Bridgeton, New Jersey. Youth campaign rehearsals every Thursday until July 21st at 6.30 p.m. All are welcome to attend. Youth campaign services will be held Wednesday through Friday, July 27th through the 29th at 7 o'clock p.m. nightly. Sunday, July 24th, at 3.30 p.m., we will have our usher's anniversary here at Union Baptist Center. Our special guests will be the heaven-bound gospel singers from Philadelphia, Pennsylvania. Spiritual boot camp will be held every Wednesday until August 17th from 6.30 p.m. to 8 o'clock p.m. The Union Baptist Temple broadcast has moved from Wednesdays to Tuesdays. Tune in to WACP TV Channel 4. Channel 4 on all major networks. If you would like additional information concerning any of our fellowships or worship services, call the church at 856 451 6054. 856 451 6054. And as with all of our services, we invite all of the community to come and join us in lifting up the name of Jesus. Oh, Lord. I come to receive, to receive my blessing, patiently waiting, patiently waiting for, the for the harvest is nigh. I got the Hebrews 11 and 1. That kind of faith, and it's mine. Oh, my. So that is harvest time. I come to receive, patiently waiting for the harvest is nigh. I got the Hebrews 11 and 1. The kind of faith, and it's mine. Oh, mine. See that it's harvest time. I believe, I believe in him for great things. He promised me a long time ago. I, I know I I'm going to get it because the Bible tells me so. And it's the Father's reason. 
feel good pleasure that the kingdom be supplied and it's mine, oh mine, to that this harvest time. I come to receive, patiently waiting for the harvest is nigh. Question I got is Hebrews 11 and 1. The kind of faith, and it's mine. Oh, mine. Say that it's harvest time. I've been waiting a long time And my faith has been wavered And I'm holding on To what the Lord said to me Every day He keeps on blessing me And it's mine Oh mine See that it's hard Come to receive, patiently waiting for the harvest to die. The kind of faith, and it's mine, oh mine, so that it's harvest time. In my home, on my job, on the road, in the valley, on the mountain, on my blessing, a financial. For my family in the valley on the mountain of my blessing of my blessing now I believe it and I decree it that that's in the If I believe it, I can receive it. My blessing, my blessing, my blessing, my blessing, and I'm holding on. What the Lord said to me. If I believe it, I can receive it every day. He keeps on blessing me every day. He keeps on blessing me. Am I blessing? And it's mine, oh my, see that it's harvest time, ah, yeah. Romans chapter 6, verses 13 through 18. Let's read together. 
neither yield ye your members as instruments of unrighteousness unto sin, but yield yourselves unto God as those that are alive from the dead, and your members as instrument of righteousness unto God. For sin shall not have dominion over you, for ye are not under the law, but under grace. What then shall we sin? Because we are not under the law, but under grace, God forbid. Know ye not that to whom ye yield yourselves servants to obey, his servants ye are to whom ye obey, whether of sin unto death or obedience unto righteousness. But God be thanked that ye were the servants of sin, but ye have obeyed from the heart that form of doctrine was delivered you. Being then made free from sin, ye become the servants of righteousness. Amen. The word of God. Just for a few moments, I want to share with you from this thought. Look at somebody and tell them it's Independence Day. It's Independence Day. This is July 4th weekend, and people have already started celebrating. July 4th really begins the separation between the colonists and England, the mother country. There was a problem because there was no representation, but they had a lot of taxation. Almost sound like today, we got a lot of taxation and not too much representation going on. But we who are believers in Jesus Christ, we have freedom in Jesus. The book of Romans is actually a doctrinal book, can divide it into three sections, chapters one through eight, is doctrine, nine through 11, you can put parentheses, parentheses around that because he's actually talking indirectly and directly to the nation of Israel. And then from 12 through 16 is duty. So whatever doctrine we learn, you got to put it into practice. Just knowing doctrine and not putting it into your life means very little. Romans chapter six, he says, neither yield ye your members as instruments of unrighteousness unto sin, but yield yourselves unto God as those that are alive from the dead and your members as instrument of righteousness unto God. The members that he's talking about, he's talking about members of our body, all the members of our body. You can use them either to bring glory to God or you can use them to bring glory to yourself. Either you can use these instruments as instruments that pleases God or you can use these same instruments and use them in disobedience, and it ends up being sin. How many remember when you use this body for sin? How many remember, because it may not have been that long ago, <laughs> but how many remember that you can use every part of this body for sin? Now, if you're thinking, well, yes, every part from the top of your head to the bottom of your feet can be used for unrighteousness. And if you're not careful, it'll try to get on you again. No? 
<laughs> Has anybody had a warfare? Anybody had to fight the devil this week? <laughs> I want some of you because y'all keep blaming all this stuff like Flip Wilson. The devil made me do it. No, the devil didn't make you. You did it on your own. You did it even before the devil got involved in it. Because we were born into sin. As a matter of fact, we've had this sinful nature longer than we've had the spiritual nature. That's why it's a constant battle. He said you can use these same instruments. James puts it like this. How can you allow blessings and cursings to come out of this same mouth? Oh, y'all don't believe that, right? How many of you ever had a cussing spirit? How many know somebody rubbed you the wrong way right now? These same instruments, these lips that will praise God will turn around and cuss somebody out. Same lips. These same feet that will dance all over this church can go back on Saturday night and do everything. Same. He said, you take these same instruments, neither yield your members as instruments of unrighteousness unto sin. The sad point is that the devil makes us think that the only sin that people can commit is sexual sin. And some of you think, well, as long as I ain't doing that, I'm fine. You can take these same instruments, use it for unrighteousness where God is not being glorified. He says, neither yield ye your instruments of, instruments of unrighteousness unto sin, but yield yourselves unto God as those that are alive from the dead and your members as instruments of righteousness unto God. For sin shall not have dominion over you, for ye are not under the law, but under grace. The law had a purpose, and we can't get rid of the law. The law had a purpose. The law showed us our need for a savior. In the Old Testament, they used to have tutors, and those tutors would bring a young man up to the point where he became a boy, became a young man. And after he became the man, the tutor was no longer necessary. The law brings us up to Jesus. And then now that we're in Jesus, we are no longer under the law, but we're under grace. And the grace of God this morning is the reason why we're able to sit here in these heavenly places today is because of his grace. Now stop trying to put grace and law together. You got to have grace. And I'm grateful this morning because of his grace. It's, it's the grace of God that causes us to be able to sit here and call on his name in righteousness is nothing but his grace. The grace. Now, if we were under the law, every time you sin, you got to bring an animal or have someone to bring an animal on your behalf. If, and remember that if you break one, you've broken them all, and that means we would have to continue to come to this altar and have a sacrifice made that we might be in the righteousness of God. But God sent his son. 
God sent his son Jesus Christ and now I am no longer under the law but I'm under grace. And because you're under grace it does not give you a license to sin. Some people believe because I'm under grace I can do whatever I want and then be forgiven. Well, you got to make sure you had the right attitude. How many know you can't fake God out? You cannot fake him. How many know that sitting right here in this place that you cannot fake him out? You cannot fake him out because he knows our heart. He knows your heart probably better than you do because he knows what this heart is capable of doing. Are you aware of what your heart and your body is capable of doing? Anybody realize what your body's capable of doing? How many of you know that right here in this service, there's a switch that you can turn it on spiritual and then go back to carnal? And even though you're trying to keep your mind on the things of God, the enemy will try to bring some other stuff into play. Because he wants you to miss the whole concept about being under the grace of God. He said under the grace, God forbid. 15 says, what then? Shall we sin because we are not under the law but under grace? God forbid. Know ye not that to whom ye yield yourselves servants to obey his servants are ye to whom ye obey, whether of sin unto death or obedience unto righteousness. When you were a sinner, how many realized you were a good sinner? Let, let me see your hands if you realize. How many of you realize you was a good, a good sinner? And how many of you realize that sin Sometimes they used to say, a miserable life of sin. How many know sometimes sin wasn't that miserable? Because if it was really that miserable, you wouldn't have stayed in it that long. But, God. How many are grateful but God? Because... And that's why you got to be careful when you look down at somebody else. It's nothing but the grace of God that I am. Just hold it right there for a moment and just, just turn to Ephesians just for a moment. Ephesians chapter 2. Ephesians chapter 2. It says, And you has he quickened who were dead in trespasses and sins, where in time past ye walked according to the course of this world, according to the prince of the power of the air, the spirit that now worketh in the children of disobedience, among whom also we all had our conversation in times past in the lust of our flesh, fulfilling the desires of the flesh and of the mind, and were by nature the children of wrath, even as others. But God. It says all of us were the children of disobedience, but God. Now look what it says. But God who is rich in mercy for his great love wherewith he loved us. I know that God loved me. Even 
Before we came to God, he loved us. He didn't start loving you after you said, Lord, come into my heart. He loved us from the very beginning. According to Romans, while I was yet a sinner, he loved us and showed his love towards us by giving us Jesus Christ. And that's why some of you don't be looking down at folk. I read this little caption not too long ago. It said, just because your sin is different than mine does not mean it's not sin. Just because your sin is not the same as mine and it may be different does not mean it's not sin. All unrighteousness is sin. And some of you got to be careful how you down other folk. Amen, lights. And some of you got to be careful how you down other folks' children. Because even though yours are grown, you got some grandchildren coming up. And you got some great grands coming up. And they are inventing some stuff now that you never thought of. But by the grace of God. <laughs> Hallelujah. But by the grace of God. Let's go back to Romans chapter 6. Six sixteen says, Know ye not that to whom ye yield yourselves servants to obey, his servants are ye to whom ye obey, whether of sin unto death, or obedience unto righteousness. You have a choice. You have a choice. Obedience to life, disobedience to death. Look at 17. But God be thanked that ye were the servants of sin. Highlight were. That's past tense. We all were servants of sin. But ye have obeyed from the heart that form of doctrine which is delivered unto you being made free from sin, ye become the servants of righteousness. Disobedience, death. Obedience, life. Disobedience, death. Obedience, life. And you need to choose which one you're going to obey. Disobedience, death. Obedience, life. And those of us who are growing in the Lord Jesus Christ will tell you it is better to obey than disobey. Because there's blessings come when you obey. How many of you found a peaceful home when you were under your parents' roof and you obeyed? Let me see you. There is peace. How many of you know that there was a problem when you were under their parents' roof and you tried to do something? Let me see your hands. How many of you have received the wrath of your parents and you're still here to tell it? Does anybody ever remember some of the things that your parents have done to you that if they lived during this period, they would be in jail. <laughs> Who's ever been hit with a broomstick?
an ironing board, an ironing cord, the cord part. Who's ever been hit with a clothes hanger? Who's ever had some stuff thrown at you? Look at your neighbor and tell him, I'm still here. I'm still, I'm still here. There comes some things for disobedience. There's a story in the Bible, and you know the brother too. His name is the prodigal son. As long as he was in the house and doing everything right, everything was smooth. But then he decided to start smelling himself. How many of you ever had some of your kids to smell themselves? And how many of you know it wasn't for the grace of God, you would have killed them on the spot? That's why if you're not saved, still thank God for the grace. There, he said, uh uh, I'm not staying here. Matter of fact, I'm leaving. I'm out. I'm out of here. Went out there, got to mixing with the wrong crowd, got down to his last. And then there's an important verse that says, and when he came to himself. Sometimes the Lord will allow you to get to that point where you can come to yourself. And he said, you know what? Let me go back to my father's house. Matter of fact, I'm not even going back as a son. I'm just going back as a servant. And just hopefully he'll take me in. But the grace of God. Grace saw him coming. And when he got back there, open arm. Come on. Matter of fact, I'm not taking you as I'm taking you back as my son. But you got to be careful because there's that other brother. Ask your neighbor, do you know the other brother? The other brother said, look, I ain't never left you. I've been here the whole time. You have never thrown me a party like that. And the father said, this is my son that once was lost and now is found. That's why. We've thrown this for him. Just like the lady that had the lost coin. Lost her coin. She finally found it. Invited everybody. Come on over. Throwing a party because I done found that lost coin. And then, same parable, same chapter. The man that had a hundred sheep. One was lost. He left the 99 to go after that one. That's why we have to be concerned about those who are lost. Those that are saved don't need saving. It's those who are lost in the world that need to come to Jesus Christ. He said, being then made free from sin, ye become the servants of righteousness. We're going to go on from 6 to, let's go to verse 19. I speak after the manner of men because of the infirmity of your flesh. For as ye have yielded your members' servants to uncleanness and to iniquity unto, uh, unto iniquity, even so now yield your members' servants to righteousness unto holiness. For when ye were the servants of sin, ye were free from righteousness. What fruit had ye then in those things whereof ye are now ashamed? For the end of those things is death. But now, being made free 
from sin and become servants to God, ye have your fruit unto holiness and the end everlasting life. And look at the last verse when it says, for the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. Go to 1 Corinthians chapter 15. 1 Corinthians chapter 15. We're going to begin at verse 47. 1 Corinthians chapter 15 verse 47. The first man is of the earth, earthly. The second man is the Lord from heaven. As is the earthly, such are they also that are earthly. And as is the heavenly, such are they also that are heavenly. And as we have borne the image of the earthly, we shall also bear the image of the heavenly. Now this I say, brethren, that flesh and blood cannot inherit the kingdom of God. Neither does corruption inherit incorruption. Behold, I show you a mystery. We shall not all sleep, but we shall all be changed. In a moment, in the twinkling of an eye, at the last trump, for the trump shall sound and the dead shall be raised incorruptible, and we shall be changed. For this corruptible must put on incorruption, and this mortal must put on immortality. So when this corruptible shall have put on incorruption, and this mortal shall have put on immortality, then shall be brought to pass the saying, that it is written, death is swallowed up in victory. O death, where is thy sting? O grave, where is thy victory? The sting of death is sin. The strength of sin is the law. But this is the verse. But thanks be to God which giveth us the victory through our Lord Jesus Christ. And this is what he encouraged us. Therefore, my beloved brethren, be ye steadfast, unmovable, always abounding in the work of the Lord, for as much as ye know that your labor is not in vain in the Lord. Thank God for our Independence Day. Thank God for Independence Day, for we have our freedom in Christ. Later on this, well, tomorrow, they're going to be celebrating with fireworks. They're going to be celebrating. Some people don't even know why they're celebrating, but they're just with the crowd. But the saints of God, we have our own fireworks. When you think about your freedom that you have in Christ Jesus. Tell your neighbor, my Toby days are over. That's for any of you that ever watch Roots. <laughs> Trying to make him a slave. No, he's free. 
And we're free in Jesus Christ. How many of you are glad that God has set you free? And how many of you are not going to allow anybody to put the chains back on you? That once Christ has set, you are free indeed. You're free. We sing that song. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. I'm free. Now, if you're really free, you got freedom to give God praise. You got freedom to worship God in spirit and in truth. If you're really free, nobody has to make you give God what's due his name. You automatically know I'm free in Jesus Christ. And I thank God for Independence Day. That other firework, they got somebody else to light their fire. How many know you got a self-starter? You just think about what God has done and about your freedom in Christ. And you know, every now and then, uh, one of my sisters, she was on the train just this week, and she said, I was, I was on the train and five or six of these guys got on the plane, I mean, got on the train, all dressed the same. She thought they were a singing group. <laughs> they were all dressed alike. One sat next to her and said, spoke very kindly. She asked him, uh, you, are you a singing group? She said, no. We just got released from prison. See, when you get released, you don't care who knows. When you're free, you don't care who. Now, you're accepting the fact, I'm telling you, I'm free. All I know, I'm no longer bound. Now, you accept what you want to accept, but I'm free. You ought to be like that when your personal walk with the Lord. You don't care what folk think about you. Y'all, you know I'm free. And I'm celebrating my Independence Day. And that's why I love it when I come to this house and I see folk experience their freedom. When folk raise that hand or put a smile on their face and some people mess their face up in such a way that they really looked and saw that face they would never do it again. But when you're free, how many of you don't care what folk think? When you are free in Christ Jesus, he gives us the freedom to worship. And I'm going to experience my Independence Day. Because I know what it feels like to be free in Christ. In that same Ephesians 2, it says, by grace are ye saved, through faith, and that not of yourselves. It is a gift of God. I'm reminding, reminded of the ten lepers that all had leprosy. The Lord healed them, but only one came back to give thanks. I want to be like that one. I want to be the one to come back and say, Lord, I thank you for what you've done for me. And I'm grateful for my independence day in Christ Jesus. Let's bow in prayer. There may be someone in this room that needs the freedom of Christ. If you're here and you're not saved, not sure of your salvation, maybe not actively involved, 
in anyone's place of worship. Or maybe you're looking for a place that you can call home. Or maybe you know it's about time that you come back. Freedom that only Christ can give. Is there anyone in the house that's not saved, not sure of your salvation, not actively involved in anyone's place of worship or if you're looking for a place that you can call home? Is there anyone in this house? Just slip your hand up and put it down if you're in the house. Not saved, not sure of your salvation, not actively involved in anyone's place of worship, or if you're looking for a place that you can call home, is there somebody else, anybody else in this place that will say yes to his will and yes to his way? I'm free. Praise the Lord, I'm free. Is there somebody else that will come this morning I'm free. Praise the Lord. I am free. I am free. Praise the Lord. I'm free. No longer. is resting it's just a blessing praise the Lord everybody I'm free I am free praise the Lord I'm free no longer man no more chains holding me. My soul is resting. It's just a blessing. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Father, in the name of Jesus, we are grateful for all that you've done. Thank you for our sister coming this morning. Thank you. We appreciate the fact of the step that she has made. We glorify you and magnify your name. We're appreciative that you've allowed her to come and be a part of this branch of Zion. We claim this victory now by faith. In Jesus' name we pray. Let the people of God say amen. Can we give God praise for her? This is the day that the Lord has made. And let us rejoice and be glad in it. I need you to praise God just according to how good he's been to you. That's all. We serve an awesome God. We serve a mighty God, and he is worthy to be praised. <laughs> Crazy, mother. <laughs>
Just tell two people, I got the praising. And just tell one more person, if you only knew. Go, 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 go ye therefore and teach all nations. Go, 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 baptizing them in the name of the Father, the Son, and Holy Ghost. the end. 